Hello mate and welcome back to Let's Code Season 4. This time it's personal. In this episode we're going to do a little bit more tweaking of our code and we're going to add some new bits and pieces as well. Before I get started, a huge thank you to my members and patrons. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. And of course, thank you to everybody for subscribing and hitting that notification icon. That really helps me out. If you are interested in supporting the channel, you can do so by becoming a member by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button, or you can simply visit the Patreon in the description down below. Either way, you're awesome. So let's jump into this then. The first thing I want to do is come into our context default. And what I want to do is add an if statement in here to make sure that these buttons are only going to appear if we actually have a person selected. And the easiest way of doing that would simply be able to put if selected is not the same as none. But what I want to actually do is put some more kind of debug code in here. And the best way I think to do that is to actually create a Python function. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to say if, and then I'm going to say character selected like so. And then I'm going to simply tab this in one block, delete that line of code like so. And then we need to come to our classes file and create this function. So down the bottom we come and we need to say def character selected. And I need to also delete one of those tabs because that is not there. So we've already got a way of detecting who is selected and will give us the nice name or it'll give us the name but we don't actually currently have a way of detecting whether or not either of these values actually correspond to something in our list. So, well, we technically this one does to be fair, but this returns a value of a string rather than anything else. So what we need to do is define character selected. We need to add global selected and then we need to run through our list of NPCs. So we also need to do uh, NPCs and we can just check that that is actually the name of our list of NPCs here just by coming into our defaults and defines file. And as you can see, it is indeed. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna say for Q in NPCs. And we don't have to use Q, it can literally be anything. If I wanted to, I could put NPC in there, but Q is just shorthand and we're going to run through and we're going to simply say if selected equals equals npcs dot and then when this is where we have to actually check what we've and actually that needs to be q anyway this is where we need to check what value we've actually returned as selected so if we come into our character screen we're going to say set variable selected as an index number which is fine so we can come back to our classes file and we can just say i comma q in enumerate npcs in brackets and then we simply say if selected equals i in other words if that value is within there in fact since we're returning integer value we can scrap this i've got a better idea we don't need to do that all we have to do is say if selected is greater than or equal to zero and selected is less than NPCs length of the NPCs then we can return true otherwise we return false okay so the reason I, I stitched the looping thing is the loop just takes time. All we're doing is we're saying that if it's if it's greater than zero, because our list always starts at index zero, and less than the length of our list. And the reason I haven't done less than or equal to is because the length of our list is always going to be a long one greater than the value of the list length, if that makes any sense, because a list that's 10 items long will actually be from zero to nine not one to 10. So we have to do if it's less than, otherwise that's gonna throw up an error. It'll go index like out of range or whatever. So we return true and then we return false otherwise. So all we're saying is, has this person got this uh, a, a valid character selected? And if not, it's gonna return false. 
Um, and that just means that we're not going to accidentally go into the realms of kind of undefined labels and procedures and stuff. So that's all we've got there. Nice and simple. Now we've also got the who selected function, which returns the name of the person. So that's also going to be kind of useful to us moving forward as well. So if we come back to our script file, currently what we've got is if you click on a character and then you click on a button, what happens is it just jumps to a label. But what happens if that label doesn't exist? Do we want to create a label for every single character for every single button that we push? And the answer is probably not. So what I want to do is create a kind of general catch all label so that if we don't have a specific label, it will default to something else. So we, we can leave this code as it is, but what we can also do is add an else statement here. If Rempy has one of those labels, then that's great. It will call it. Otherwise, we will say call and we'll just say default interaction. And now we need to create a label with that. So we just create a new file in our screens. We don't need to create it in screens, sorry. Inside our scripts folder, currently we don't have a scripts kind of subfolder. So we're gonna just go to new folder there. Actually, we don't need to create that inside core. We need to create that inside scripts, new folder. And then we can just call this something like interactions or something like that. That's gonna create a new folder. And then inside that folder, we can create our new file and we'll just call it default interaction rpy and then label control v perfect all right so let's look at what data is available to us to use within this label in our script file we are receiving ui return and selected let's have a look at what those are if a character is clicked on that's the wrong but the wrong screen then we're getting nothing from our ui return However, once we've clicked on our character, we then go into our contextual default menu and we're returning a function, a word, a string within that uh, list, which is cool. So we kind of have an idea of what is happening. So we now have the availability of the number, the index number of the character. We also have a function or a string that's being defined. And so we also have uh, the ability to work with the name so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to put a comment up here and i'm just going to list the things that we have available to us selected equals integer value or in let's just call it index of npc list get rid of that extra over there just so that it actually makes sense and then we can go there then we can also go who and then let's copy the name of that wherever we've created it so who selected returns the name who selected is the npc name not the nice name it just means that we remember we've got that and then we also have funk which is the button function string so we've got three pieces of data available to us immediately when we click on a button so what we can actually do is we can create images and pop-up screens that will that will have a general functionality rather than having to do a specific one for each different thing and then we can only create labels for the ones that we want to have special functionality to so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, image to display equals and we're going to just make that zero and then we're going to copy and we're going to paste it again you just want to make sure that it's set to zero in fact I'm also going to create a default for that value there and then that way the program knows that that is actually meant to be a string and it, and it defaults to an empty one if we can't find anything else so there we go now we've told it that it's zero and the reason we're doing it now is so that it it, ought, it doesn't keep showing the same image again if we're clicking on a different character it has to go through everything functionality wise over and over again rather than 
messing around. Okay, so now we need to decide what value or how we're going to define the names of our image files. And so what we can do is we can just have a little bit of, thing of a think about that. So we could just simply use an index number for the in, in MPC list, but I prefer to use who selected as the actual name. And we could even have random functionality so that it displays slightly different images for different things all the time, but let's keep things simple for now. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define image to display equals, and then we want curly braces. That will be the name of the character, I think. And what I think I will do is I'll actually create a folder. So let's just call interactions. There we go. And so we've got the name of the character there, and then we can call a another value there, .png like so. And I'm thinking, yeah, that'll probably be it for now. So we'll just say dot .format. And then we want who selected. And then uh, func, which is actually our UI return value. But I think we're going to have to... Probably going to have to set another value to that otherwise just in case they accidentally interact with a different part of the screen or just to make things simple so i think what we're going to do is create another defaults and defines and we'll call this func clicked and that's going to be an empty string as well and we'll just double click on that copy that and then in our script because at the moment we have ui return is func so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that value again. And that just means that we've captured that variable and it's not going to mess up. Cool. Back into our defaults. And then now we can say func clicked there. And then we need to define, say, if rempy.loadable or if rempy isn't loadable that file, then we'll just give it a default. So if not renpy.loadable image to display then we can simply set image to display to equal something else image to display equals and then we can just say uh, interactions default png and that just means that it will show something we have to obviously create this image so what i will do is put create interactions forward slash defaults dot png and that just means that we won't forget we need to create a default png file for if we click on an action and that action has some kind of functionality but we haven't yet got an image for it so cool and then all we have to do is we have to show the image and then hide it again. So I'm just going to quickly put an aid memoir in here to remind me of everything that's happening, just in case I go wandering off on a mental tangent. So what we're going to do here is show the image for interaction. And then we're also going to put display the pop-up of stat change. So the stat change is the thing that the character player is going to be mostly interested in but having an image to demonstrate as well. So what we need to do is we actually need to kind of diversify or rather spread out a little bit here because what we also need to do is we need to decide whether stats go up or down and by how much. And then we need to, after making that decision, pass that information to the pop-up so that it displays a pop-up and then returns back to the game proper. It also needs to decrease something, so maybe the energy the character has or something like that. So those are the kind of decisions that we have to make based on something. What I'm going to have is like, as I said before, some kind of character's personality type, some kind of archetype, which will react dependent on what the player does. So on top of our NPC class, what we actually need to do is add another value in here. And we're going to call that archetype like so. 
just copy that so that we don't have to keep typing it over again. So I'll say self dot archetype equals archetype. Save that, and then we also need to go back to the bit where we define uh, defaults and defines, and we need to add another string in here, like so. And then I will just add empty strings for now because we have to define what those are and then we can decide what interactions each archetype will react to and how. So that about wraps it up for this episode. I know that we didn't do an awful lot of code, but it's important to understand the thought process and why we make these decisions so that when we move forward, we can build our code around those decisions without making any mistakes. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves. All right, bye-bye.